All right, today we're going to be talking a little bit about the tactic of then enter search. This is also called a targeted search. We're just going to talk a little bit about how it's performed and when it's performed. This type of search gives victims the best chance of survival. Generally, we're looking to start searches as close to the fire as we possibly can. Some of the exceptions to this are going to be when we have a fire on the first floor of a two-story building. Time of day may dictate that we need to go directly to the second floor where we have the highest probability of victims. Sometimes the fire has to be controlled before the search, but really more often than not, we can and should be performing both at the same time. Before using this tactic, you need to understand the difference between venting for fire and venting for life. Venting for life must be done with the knowledge that you're going to be drawing fire at you once you make that opening. We need to talk about the go versus no go parameters. The go parameters include when you know you have a viable rescue, when there are no signs of impending flashover, and of course, like always, you need to make sure that it's a coordinated attack, and you need to make sure that you have a good membrane. In other words, uh, the other side of that room should have a door or some way to compartmentalize that room from the rest of the structure. So a no-go would be when you obviously don't have a viable rescue, such as when there's imminent flashover, flashover's already occurred. Or uh, when you have a loss of that membrane, there's no way to compartmentalize that room from the rest of the building. Or when you're using PPV. Once it's been identified that the vent and search tactics are going to be used, you need to make sure that you're not also implementing positive pressure ventilation. Okay, so now we've got our ladder in place. Now there's a couple of different ways that people talk about doing this. One is to put the ladder up and take the window out with the tip of the ladder. The other option is to put the ladder up and then climb the ladder and take the window out then. We prefer to put the ladder up first, climb the ladder, and then take the window. That allows us to better control our environment. From the tip of the ladder, we're going to be able to assess the interior conditions. We're looking for the door to make sure that we can compartmentalize that room. We can also assess uh, current interior conditions within that room, since this is most likely going to be a, a victim rescue scenario. Some of the recommended tools, the searcher has a halligan that's going to aid in his search. It's also going to take up, a, you can take a roof hook or a multi-purpose hook or, or a pike pole or something like that to help you stay oriented to the window and we'll cover that. And then also since this is an oriented person operation, we're going to bring up a tick for the oriented man. Getting ready to use my tool. Take the head of the tool, plant it firmly against one of the rungs. Now we've got a nice solid pivot point to work with. Come forward, strike the window. Now I can come around, clear the window out, take out any sash that may be in there. So now we've taken the sash and we want to be sure to let this room breathe. If it decides to immediately flash, it's important that we know that before we commit ourselves in. I'm looking to see how the conditions are changing. Do I have good lift? Is it starting to really chug out at me? Now the searcher is going to make his entry and he's going to be continuously assessing conditions as he comes through the window, keeping in mind that his door is most likely going to be directly across from his entrance window. The first thing the searcher is going to do is gently sweep below the windowsill to search for any potential victims. If there's no victims, he's free to sound the floor with the head of the tool to make sure that he has a stable structure. Now, this is the head first method, which many folks prefer. It allows you to stay low and begin your search a little bit quicker. Alternatively, you can use the straddle method. This is where you throw one leg over the sill and brace yourself up with your arm. As before, you need to sweep and sound the floor. Which method you use is really just a matter of personal preference. Okay, now myself in the officer position, I've waited until my firefighter has made entry to the window and then I'm going to head up directly after him. Now as an oriented member on the ladder, I'm going to keep an eye on my teammate. One of the first things I'm going to do if I still have the hook, I'm going to hook the sill for him. And what having the hook there is going to do is it's going to give the searcher a reference point. When he goes around the room and comes back to that hook, he knows that he's at his entrance window. My other responsibility is to monitor with the tick. And what I'm looking for is, one, I'm keeping an eye on my partner, two, I'm assessing for any victims that may be in the room, and three, I'm looking for any unusual heat signatures, such as, is that door or the wall or the ceiling starting to glow, starting to get hot, are we starting to have a breach of this room, our fire conditions changing, and our tactics may have to change. 
as a searcher, your very first priority is to get to that door and close it, compartmentalize that room from the rest of the house. Before you do so, it's important that you take a look down the hall to evaluate conditions. If conditions warrant, you can go straight to the door. However, in limited visibility, it may help to do a wall search pattern towards your door. If upon entering the room the door is already closed, you still need to open it and take a look outside. One, to look for victims, and number two, to evaluate conditions inside the house to see how long you have that room. Once the door is closed, you're going to commence your search. Now remember, this is a primary search, so it has to be done very quickly. If you do find a victim, alert your partner and remove your victim through the window. If you come upon a victim right away, your priority is still to get to that door to compartmentalize that room for the safety of you and your victim. To stay oriented to your search point, a good tip is to bury the pike of your halligan into the wall. That way, once the victim's removed and you resume your search, you can move very quickly up to the point where you left off and then resume a more thorough search at that point onward. Bend under search is also a great tactic to be used from porch tops. The benefit of this is you can reach multiple windows using just one ladder, which will free up other ladders for other uses. When venting multiple windows, if possible, try and start with the downwind windows first, working your way upwards. Search complete. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully you picked up a few new things about Ben under search and we'll see you next time.